I'm Dr. Sam, and this is Dr. Sam's Help. I haven't made a video in the past two or three weeks. I was really busy. I've been away for a couple of weeks for some uh, research and work-related stuff, and also I have lots of on-call shifts, so I'm really, really busy these days, uh, but no matter what, show must go on, so today I'm going to talk about something special. In one of my previous videos, I've been talking about metabolism. We described the metabolism as a whole, what is happening uh, in our bodies, how we get our energy, how we uh, store it, how we use it. I think that before we get into any kind of serious conversation about diets, about uh, nutrition, about uh, the implications of nutrition and diet to uh, our weight loss or workout routines, we should get over at least the most important things such as macronutrients. So, so with today's video I'm going to start a little series of videos on uh, macronutrients which will include carbohydrates, lipids or fat, proteins, and uh, maybe I'll make a couple of videos, separate videos on uh, alcohol and uh, cholesterol. So today we're going to talk about carbohydrates. What are these? Why do we need them? Where can we find them? What our bodies are doing to them? What are our bodies' responses to them? And how can we use carbohydrates uh, for our own good? And how we can incorporate them in our nutrition and uh, our workout routines so or body transformation stuff. So what are carbohydrates? This is a very simple question, and there is a very simple answer to this. And if we were having like a scientific discussion, I would be happy to provide you with this simple answer. But it is too scientific and it's very unpractical. So instead, I will give you my own definition of what carbohydrates are and I find it to be the most appropriate for this uh, video. So carbohydrates are simple sugars or their combination. I, th I think it's the simplest it can get. So I will do my best to go over the carbohydrates and I will proceed from the simplest ones to more complex ones. And in the process I will discuss, I'll go over like what is important about them, why in general I'm talking about them. So the simplest carbohydrates uh, are something that we call simple sugars. They are divided into two subcategories, monosaccharides and uh, disaccharides. These are scientific terms and I will try to do my best to use as few of them as possible, but sometimes we just cannot get by without using them. So monosaccharides are molecules that have literally just, it's just one molecule. These are the simplest sugars possible. These are glucose, infamous, uh, galactose, ribose, uh, fructose. Uh, there are quite a few of them and there are different variations of them, but what we really have to know uh, are the following three. I would name glucose, galactose, and fructose. Glucose is the most obvious and the most important one just because the sugar levels in our bodies are determined by the levels of glucose. And glucose is the most ubiquitous and uh, the most common uh, monosaccharide of simple sugar that our bodies use. And it's uh, the base molecule for, for the majority, if not all, of the complex sugars or complex uh, carbohydrates. So uh, we've got these three, glucose, we already spoke about it. Uh, we've got galactose, which is part of the part of milk, and that's why it's called galactose. And fructose, which is structurally very different from glucose, but it's still a sugar, and it's very common, commonly found in, in fruit. And that's why we call it fructose, right? Also, one important remark. Uh, every time I read about sugars, uh, I, I see some pictures, some pictures of uh, simple, simple sugars, disaccharides, uh, monosaccharides, and uh, I always have this tendency to post them somehow, but for this video I just realized that there is literally no point for any, any of you to actually see the actual formula, but if you want to see an actual formula, how, how the molecule looks like, uh, please go to my blog, uh, I'll be posting it there. So, having said that, we can move to, to the second part of uh, simple sugars, which are disaccharides. Most of our uh, sugars in nature, they do not exist in the form of monosaccharides, they usually are combined together. So, if we combine two glucoses, we, we can get a, a maltose or isomaltose, which are two forms of the same molecule that they are connected differently. Uh, 
the bottom line is maltose is two molecules of glucose. It's not that interesting because we've got other disaccharides that are more interesting. One of them is sucrose, which is a combination of, uh, of glucose and fructose. And this is something that has a scientific name, sucrose, but actually we know it under the name of table sugar. So every time you put some sugar into your, uh, into your tea or into any food you're, you're, you're cooking, uh, you're putting sucrose there. And we've got a special enzyme called sucrase that digests it, it, it into uh, glucose and fructose. Another fun fact about sucrose is that scientists have come up with a very funny way of tricking our brain into believing that we're taking in some sugar, whereas we aren't. Uh, so what they have done, they have added some molecules of chlorine, chlorinated uh, uh, the molecule of um, sucrose, uh, to, uh, to create something that we know under the name of Splenda. It is a sweetener that when we uh, consume, uh, it tastes like sugar because effectively it is sugar with some chlorine molecules added to it, but uh, when it goes through our digestive system, our body simply cannot uh, cleave it apart into glucose and fructose, so it passes through uh, pretty much unaffected and doesn't affect our metabolism at all. Another important disaccharide is lactose, which is uh, effectively the core component of milk. Uh, and uh, our bodies are, a are able to process it until the age of two, and then um, some people, majority of people in different uh, races, ethnicities, uh, lose this ability, and they become lactose intolerant. They do not have enzyme, which is called lactase, that is necessary to process lactose. So if you are, say, 15, 20 year old uh, person without lactase, if you consume some milk, uh, lactose in milk cannot be digested and our gut bacteria start working on it. By, and when it happens, they tend to produce a lot of gas and that's why I've got this abdominal cramping, uh, flood lands and so on. Now, when we have discussed the very basics of what carbohydrates are, I think it makes sense that we are ready to talk about what happens to carbohydrates when they get to our bodies, and what happens to our bodies when we ingest carbohydrates. So first of all, as soon as this food reaches our mouth, um, our body starts producing something that is called salivary amylase. Amylum means starch, so amylase is the enzyme that uh, starts digesting starch in our food, carbohydrates in general, and uh, unfortunately this process stops very quickly when the food reaches our stomach because of the acidity and uh, uh, the very aggressive contents of our stomach, uh, the salivary amylase gets destroyed very quickly and this process of carbohydrate digestion restarts in duodenum, which is the first part of our gut after stomach. Uh, we've got pancreas which produces pancreatic enzymes, specifically pancreatic, pan pancreatic uh, amylase, that restarts processing uh, starch in our, uh, in our food. Also, there are several other enzymes in our gut that uh, help digest in uh, complex carbohydrates and, and uh, disaccharides into the very simple molecules, monosaccharides, which are then being absorbed into, into our bloodstream. And from our bloodstream, there are several things that are happening to them. First of all, there is a spike of glucose and our body starts to produce hormone known insulin. So insulin, the main job of insulin is actually to make sure that uh, our, our, our tissues get enough glucose. So as soon as glucose levels spike, insulin makes sure that all this glucose has been re redistributed across different tissues. And two tissues are very important in this case. Uh, there's a uh, skeletal muscle and the liver. These two tissues have an ability to uh, take this glucose in and not only use it for their like, metabolic purposes, but also it can, they can store it in the form of glycogen. They can create glycogen molecules. We've got limited capacity of uh, storing glycogen for a very simple and very silly reason, actually. Glycogen is very hygroscopic and it's very big. So it means that the molecule has a shape, I would describe it as a snowflake, that also absorbs a lot of water to it. So for each gram of uh, glycogen, you actually store around four grams of water. And uh, therefore, it's simply a space-occupying molecule, that, uh, and we have limited amount of space. 
uh, which limits to our body capacity of storing glycogen to approximately one pound, like three to five hundred grams. Another important aspect of carbohydrate metabolism is that uh, there are only two organs in our body that really rely that really rely heavily on uh, carbohydrates, or specifically on glucose. One of these organs or tissues is red blood cells, which are 100% relying on uh, exclusively glucose. They, they do not have nuclei, so they cannot produce any enzymes to help them, like intracellular machinery that will help them to use any other sources of fuel. So that is the reason why our bodies have to have very specific levels of glucose. Another organ uh, that is heavily relying on glucose is our brain. And interesting thing about our brain that it can effectively utilize glucose, but if we run out of glucose for some reason, our brain can switch to other sources of energy such as ketone bodies. And we'll talk about ketone bodies when I'll be talking about fat and mm, lipids. But the whole idea is that it takes around two to three weeks for our bodies to actually adjust uh, to this transition. And uh, usually there is something that we call Atkins flu, uh, like a little bit of malaise when, when you are going on a low carb diet. And that is why it is important uh, to stick to your diet if you, if you decided to go low carb, because every time you indulge yourself, every time you consume a like, substantial amount of carbohydrates, you effectively break, the, break this um, ketosis, uh, ketogenesis, and your brain's adaptation to uh, low levels of glucose. So that's, that's the take-home point here. Another important thing that we have to talk about is that what happens when a couple of hours or several hours after uh, we have ingested our meals. So we have absorbed all carbohydrates from our gut, we have already redistributed it across organs and uh, organs and tissues started using glucose and at a certain point uh, they run out of it. So what's, what's happening there? In this situation our glucose levels start to drop and our body starts producing the something that uh, the Eastern European school of uh, physiology would call counterinsular hormones, which are hormones that are counteracting insulin. The main hormone would be glucagon, but there are also several others, stress hormones effectively, such as cortisol, norepinephrine, that actually help glucagon to do its job. And the job of glucagon is to keep levels of glucose at certain level. So how does it do its job? The main effects of glucagon are uh, first of all, it starts burning uh, glycogen or breaking it down into simple molecules of glucose and uh, releasing them into the bloodstream so that uh, glucose levels stay the same. Another effect of glucagon is uh, conversion of proteins into glucose, something that we call gluconeogenesis. So we're creating new molecules of glucose that we need so much from protein. Uh, and the third effect would be burning fat. So, so that our body, even if we don't have enough glucose to maintain our, many of our tissues and our brain, uh, we can still use other sources of energy such as ketones, and again I will talk about them in the next video. Uh, we can use them to uh, fuel our, uh, our organs. I think it sums up pretty much everything we have to know about carbohydrates and their role in our metabolism, and now I would like to talk a little bit about why do we need them. And Quite honestly, my very short answer will be we don't need them at all. If you think about it, why would you need them? Uh, there is only one, effectively one organ in our body, which is actually very small, uh, red blood cells that are relying exclusively on glucose. And our body can effectively create enough glucose from protein alone. So for the rest of the organs, we actually don't need glucose. Uh, we don't need any other carbohydrates. Uh, just a like, very fine print remark here. Uh, there are also some very unique specific carbohydrates that we need, but we can get them from animal food. Every time we get our, um, our protein, uh, this protein, animal products, they come with these specific carbohydrates that we need for very unique specific functions. Other than that, we really don't need any carbohydrates. And uh, I would say that for the practical purposes of body transformation, we should stick to uh, low carbohydrate diets. So my personal, actual professional recommendation to you would be to stay away from carbohydrates for many reasons. First of all, every time we consume carbohydrates, we've got a spike of glucose, 
followed by spike of insulin, and the job of insulin is not only to redistribute uh, glucose across the tissues, but also to, to create fat. So every time we consume carbs, we create fat. Believe it or not, it's a straightforward fact. Another important aspect of carbohydrate living is that when we consume carbohydrates regularly and lots of them, uh, we, first of all, we become dependent on them. So, so that if you are, like, say, a marathon runner or an athlete that relies heavily on carbohydrates, most likely you will need some sort of a carb load and just before your workout, in many cases even during your workout, otherwise you will literally hit the wall. It's an actual term, I think, in like endurance athletes. Uh, without carbohydrates, if you are keto adapted, and again I'll talk about it in my next video, you will never hit the wall because your body will have enough uh, sources of fuel to maintain very long lasting activities. Another important thing that is worth mentioning is when you are cons consuming lots of carbohydrates, especially if you are following our nutrition guidelines that say that approximately 60% of your uh, energy needs should come from uh, carbohydrates, uh, you're exposing yourself to peaks of glucose that are followed by peaks of insulin, and these peaks of insulin, high levels of circulating insulin, make you insulin resistant eventually and it increases your chances of becoming uh, someone who has type 2 diabetes. I really don't want to argue with nutrition guidelines but it's something that I have to mention. I find it ridiculous that for 30, 40, 50 years uh, our governments and in Canadian and American one uh, are insisting on this stupid document. There is literally no scientific basis for these guidelines. It's just like some sort of a consensus opinion that's been perpetuated over the course of many years. A part of this side note, uh, I've got three things that I would like to mention before I wrap up this video. The three things that we can do with carbohydrates to help our nutrition and our health, uh, apart from not taking them at all. Fact number one, we do have uh, carbohydrates that are very helpful. They're good for our digestive system. This is fiber and uh, you should consume 20-30 grams of fiber a day in order to ensure your gastrointestinal health. The second thing is uh, using carbohydrates strategically in order to have this actual glucose spike result in a spike of insulin that is one of the most important anabolic hormones in our body. So insulin is not that, not always that bad of a hormone. We can actually use it strategically to improve our performance and to improve our anabolism and uh, building our muscles in certain scenarios in very specific ways. The third thing would be related to your glycogen storage. So imagine if you are on a low carb diet, at a certain point you can actually consume limited amount, very specific amount of carbohydrates so that your body stores it almost exclusively in the form of uh, glycogen. So you do not add any fat, but you add some glycogen, which will increase the volume of your muscles to a certain extent, maybe by 5-10%, which can have a drastic effect if you are literally a competing bodybuilder. So that was pretty much everything I had to say about carbohydrates in relation to our body transformation, metabolism. Uh, I believe that everyone who wants to transform their bodies in a scientific way, everyone who wants to know what they are doing, uh, should know at least the very, very basics and uh, be able to apply them in, in, in their everyday life uh, to, um, uh, to implement this knowledge, to use it uh, for creating your nutrition program, your workout program and so on. I will continue talking about other ma macronutrients, I will talk about fat, lipids uh, in my next video and we'll be talking about lipids, ketone bodies, about keto adaptation, ketosis and so on. The next one will be about uh, protein which is obviously very important, especially for those of us who want to build beautiful bodies, big muscle and so on. And uh, I think I'll make another one or two videos about like unique molecules such as alcohol and cholesterol, which can be considered to be macronutrients. So I hope you like this format. Please leave your comments, uh, leave your likes, subscribe ask your questions, I'll be happy to answer them, uh, support the cause by doing so. And I'll see you in my next video. All the best!